So I'm going to talk now a little bit about the Pessaboyden method so that when you see it or experience it working, you'll be able to understand what's going on. Um, one of the key things about Pessaboyden that, that is different from traditional therapeutic methods is that it's not so interested in getting things out of the client. It's not so interested in your old memories, your old feelings. It doesn't stay with difficult, painful things because it works on the, the theory that um, we don't want to reinforce the, the brain patterns around that. So it's much more interested in creating a new kind of experience that comes into the client. So when you're in a structure, um, we will be encouraging you to take in the new experience rather than to stay with the old map. And sometimes that can be quite tricky, but uh, um, hopefully you'll be able to get that new experience. So it's called a structure, but it's just a, a client session really. It does have a structure which needn't, um, needn't worry you, but uh, we follow a, a pattern through the, through the sessions. You will see something called um, a witness figure. So when I'm working with you, I'll, I'll gesture like this to, to say um, there's an, an imaginary witness figure here, and if the witness were here, the witness would say, I see how distressed you feel when you think about what happened, whatever it was. And so their role is to reflect back to you what you're feeling. And if it's not quite right, I want you to correct me, correct the witness figure, okay? So, so it's important that your feelings are reflected back to you accurately. That's the witness figure. We will also um, hear voices. Um, these are past messages that you will have learned when you were younger um, and that were helpful at one point. We all have these. We needed to learn certain rules to fit into the family uh, or, or school or whatever it was. Um, and they were helpful at one point but less so now. So we will identify voices so, so that you can uh, be aware of them and have a different um, experience of them. We will use placeholders. These are small objects that you put on the floor in front of you and just um, map out your world. So they represent people or places or things that, that are important to you. There are role players. Role players um, are other people in the group who will take the role of a, an imaginary or an ideal figure. Uh, if you're asked to be a role figure, the good news is that there's no improvisation. Okay, So I will agree with the client what they want you to say or to do. I'll, I'll relay that to you and all you need to do is to follow those instructions. So it's quite important that you don't uh, improvise when you're being a role figure. There's quite a body focus in peso avoidance. So I will ask you often what it is that uh, is going on in your body and what your body needs to, uh, to really get in touch with that. We will start to do reversals and antidote. What, what has happened to you in the past that was unhelpful? So you had a, a father who didn't pay enough attention to you. We, we might have an ideal father who pays you as much attention as you would like. So that would be an example of a, a reversal. So it's antidotes, the, the painful things that happened, and starts to form a new memory. We may have some movies. Movies are stories um, that we provide a different story for somebody else in your life that you are concerned with for some reason. And we do that with objects in a very kind of symbolic way. Um, uh, and the other thing I would like to say is that I'll ask you to respect um, the ritual space. So it's a little bit like theatre in a way. We are creating a little piece of um, theatre that is just right for you. Um, and as observers, I just need to ask you to, um, to respect that, really. Any questions about any of that? Fairly straightforward?